This programme has been made by the Safer Roads Foundation to graphically illustrate that the lives of pedestrians are being seriously compromised due to an inherent danger that exists at Pelican crossings throughout the country. The Safer Roads Foundation is a science-based, not-for-profit organisation dedicated to reducing road casualties, not just in the UK, but also around the world. As well as being a principal member of the European Transport Safety Council, the Safer Roads Foundation has also developed close working relationships with the Department for Transport, the Highways Agency, the Driving Standards Agency, Transport for London, and the UK's Parliamentary Advisory Council for Transport Safety. Whilst the Safer Roads Foundation is actively involved in many different aspects of road safety, one long-standing cause for concern is safety at signal-controlled pedestrian crossings. Over the years, the Foundation has worked with many local authorities to ensure that on multi-lane approaches, at least one signal can always be seen by approaching drivers, that the signal heads themselves are correctly aligned, and that they are not obscured by vegetation or street clutter. Other initiatives helped lead to revisions in the Department for Transport's LTN 198, the guidelines for the installation of traffic signals and associated equipment, and subsequently the Department's Good Practice Guides for Puffin Crossings. With the objective of improving safety at signal-controlled crossing points, the Foundation has also worked closely with Transport for London in the drawing up of their 2004 Puffing Design Guide. Fully compliant with DFT standards, the guide clearly defines the design principles for the installation of signal-controlled crossings to ensure maximum pedestrian safety. In the UK, there are approximately 12,000 standalone signal-controlled pedestrian crossings. In general terms, these crossings fall into three distinct types. There are pelicans, as we have here, as well as puffin and pedex configurations. In addition, there are also toucans for cyclists and pegasus for horse riders. With three different types of mainline pedestrian crossings, there are different rules to comprehend and absorb, and unsurprisingly, this causes considerable confusion for pedestrians. At Pelican crossings, the sequence for pedestrians is a far-sided red man, green man, flashing green man, and only then back to red. Simultaneously, as pedestrians are receiving the flashing green man, drivers are given a flashing amber signal. At a puffin crossing, the pedestrian display unit is near side and the sequence is simply either an explicit red or green man. In traffic being released, the driver receives the familiar standard format of red, red and amber, and then green. This type of crossing has the attraction of providing an unambiguous message to both parties. At pedex crossings, the sequence for pedestrians is green man, followed by a blackout period, often lasting for several seconds, before the red man appears. Pedestrians, particularly tourists, are often confused by the blackout period, and without receiving any other information, will often step into the carriageway. This confusing blackout period has been addressed by the use of countdown indicators, which provide clear information to the pedestrian as to how much time is remaining before the red man appears. Because of the invaluable information they provide to pedestrians, countdown indicators are now becoming the preferred design option around the developed world. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Of the three main types of signal controlled pedestrian crossings used in the UK, the design which causes concern to the Safer Roads Foundation, the Parliamentary Advisory Council for Transport Safety and the European Transport Safety Council is the Pelican with its flashing green man signal, which creates an inherent danger to the public. The European Transport Safety Council is a strong exponent of the safety advantages of puffins, and in particular the PEDEX configuration with accompanying countdown markers which makes the continued installation of pelicans at new sites in the UK profoundly worrying. 
If you live in the UK and travel to a different area, or like me, you are a visitor to this country, you can encounter several different formats of pedestrian crossings. This is extremely confusing, and ETSC believes the flashing green man is the primary source of confusion. Across Europe and around the world, green is used to indicate that it's safe to step out onto the crossing. Pelican crossings were first introduced in the UK in 1969, some 44 years ago, but disturbingly are still being installed at crossings undergoing modernization and at completely new installations. The concern is that there is now powerful published data from the Transport Research Laboratory and others confirming that puffing crossings are significantly safer in comparison to pelicans, with a dramatic 24% reduction in pedestrian collisions. Of course, there will be high volume pedestrian sites where it's more appropriate to have facing pedestrian signals. And this requirement can be accommodated by the PEDX formats, which have become an attractive option when incorporated with the new countdown indicators. With the confusion caused by the flashing green man, respecting the DFT's guidance from 2006, and most of all, due to the proven safety advantages of the puffins, Many highway authorities across the UK no longer use pelicans. As a result, situations frequently occur where drivers and pedestrians visiting different parts of the country where pelicans are still used are totally unfamiliar with how they operate, which significantly compounds the danger. The flashing green man in particular is a source of confusion, as by all common understanding, green means go and the flashing is routinely interpreted by pedestrians as hurry up and you can still step off the curb until the flashing stops. Simultaneously, as pedestrians are receiving a flashing green man, drivers receive a flashing amber, which again is ambiguous in its meaning, with many drivers proceeding while pedestrians are still on the apron. The situation is hazardous enough when there is only one lane of approaching traffic, as shown at this site on Tooley Street by London Bridge Station. However, the danger is most acute at sites with multi-lane approaches, especially if there's a high-sided vehicle in one of the lanes, which can and does prevent a driver travelling in the adjacent lane from seeing a pedestrian crossing on a flashing green man signal. And with drivers and pedestrians completely unsighted from one another, this can have devastating consequences, because many people simply do not know the rules. If I saw a green flashing man, I would think it was safe to go. Yeah, I'd think it'd be safe to go as well. As you trust it, don't you? You trust the green to go. As a visitor, you know, it's very confusing when the traffic light blinks on and off, even though it's green, we believe that it still means walk. A new amber is that you can still go, but I didn't know that the man was flashing green at the same time. I think people get confused because we're not from London and you know it should not be there. It should say stop. Now I would say go fast, hurry, run. He's gonna turn, he's gonna change the signal, so you better get on with it. <laughs> so gonna, okay. Oh, see now it's red. It's patently clear that the rules applying to pelicans are widely misunderstood by both drivers and pedestrians. And this is a direct consequence of having a mix of three different crossing designs in use across the UK. As the DFT still technically allows pelicans to be installed at new sites, one highway authority will take a completely different stance to another. The level of driver confusion in relation to the flashing amber sequence at Pelicans is demonstrated in Canary Wharf. The highway authority, Canary Wharf Group PLC, has erected large warning signs directly adjacent to the signals, making it explicitly clear to drivers that pedestrians have priority when the lights are showing red or amber.
The Department of Transport recognised the dangers associated with pelican crossings long ago and developed a new type of crossing, the Puffin, which doesn't have the flashing green man and flashing amber. In 1995, the department issued guidance to local authorities on pedestrian crossings. Local Transport Note 195 says that the Puffin crossing is planned to replace the pelican type as a standard standalone pedestrian crossing once initial trials are complete. There is an obvious need for a consistent progression across the country to the new standards of Puffin or alternatively PEDEX configurations. As without this, pedestrian safety will continue to be seriously compromised with the increased ongoing likelihood of loss of life or serious injury. Having seen for myself in observing Pelican sites, confusion by both pedestrians and drivers is ongoing. It's clear from the scientific evidence available that if Pelicans were replaced with the safer formats of Puffins or PEDEX with countdown indicators, many lives will be saved. With the ongoing confusion caused by the flashing green and amber sequences at Pelican crossings, Transport for London's 2004 Puffin Design Guide emphasised that the Puffin crossing has been designed to address concerns relating to pelicans and also offer operational advantages. A further report was published in 2006, this time by the DFT, called the Puffin Good Practice Guide, which states... Signalised pedestrian and cycle facilities have been used on our roads for a number of years, but the facilities and signalling sequences are not standardised, and experience has shown that many people do not fully appreciate how they work, leading to confusion and conflict. The 2006 Good Practice Guide goes on to state that it is the DFT's intention that Puffin pedestrian facilities will become the standard form of provision of signalled pedestrian crossings, providing a consistent approach at junctions and mid-block crossings, including Toucan for cyclists and Pegasus for equestrians. The department makes clear that Local authorities should therefore be planning migration to Puffin-style facilities, particularly for new works and refurbishment or upgrades. But seven years on, this is simply not happening. Even now, at modernisations and new sites, pelicans, as we have here, with all the associated confusion that comes with them, are still being installed, with the result that the safety of pedestrians using these crossings continues to be compromised. To quantify the safety benefits of a puffin, the Department for Transport commissioned Transport Research Laboratory to carry out a number of major studies, the most recent being in 2011, to compare accident frequency between puffin and pelican crossings. Statistically, the results showed significant safety benefits. Personal injury accident frequencies were shown to be 17% lower at mid-block crossings, 19% lower over all the sites, 24% lower for all pedestrian accidents, and 16% lower for all vehicle accidents. The reality is that puffin crossings have been proven to provide dramatic safety benefits over pelican crossings. In essence, the fewer pelicans there are, the fewer people will be killed or seriously injured. Following the concerns for pedestrian safety at Tower Hill raised by the Safer Roads Foundation, the existing Pelican crossing was replaced by a PEDEX configuration. Now, without the confusing flashing green man sequence, pedestrian confusion is no longer witnessed on an ongoing basis. Despite the overwhelming evidence that PEDEX and Puffin crossings are significantly safer than Pelicans, it's extremely disturbing that some highway authorities are still allocating capital funds to modernise or install new Pelican crossings, especially after the DFT advised back in 2006 that local authorities should be planning a migration to Puffin-style facilities, particularly for new works and refurbishment and upgrades. It's clear that the rules applying to Pelicans are widely misunderstood. The combination of a flashing green man for pedestrians and a simultaneous amber signal for traffic is not only confusing, but it's also linked to a high percentage of pedestrian casualties at Pelican crossings. As we've seen in this programme, the danger is most evident at locations with multi-lane approaches, where pedestrians routinely cross on a flashing green man at the same time as drivers receive a flashing amber signal. 
If there's a high-sided vehicle in one lane, the driver travelling in another will be unable to see the crossing pedestrian and might mistakenly drive through with potentially disastrous consequences. ETSC considers it's essential for the Department for Transport to urgently initiate the necessary administrative guidelines to ensure that Pelican crossings are phased out at the earliest opportunity and are no longer permissible for new installations or modernizations. Most importantly of all, and as highlighted by this program, where Pelican crossings are used on multi-lane approaches, priority and resources should be given to urgently upgrade these to one of the other safer options. Not all sites, particularly those with high pedestrian footfall, are suitable for puffins, and a number of local authorities have introduced crossings with far side facilities accompanied by countdown indicators, so that pedestrians know how long they have left to cross. We're not saying that existing pelicans should be removed, but we are saying that in future, pelicans should not be installed at new sites. What would bring immediate benefit would be the simple action by the Department for Transport of withdrawing approval for pelicans at modernizations and new sites. This would be such an easy and straightforward thing for the department to deliver and would at least stop adding to the problem. With regard to existing installations, the most important priority is to urgently replace those pelican crossings on multi-lane approaches with puffins or pedex configurations. For as we've seen so graphically in this program, these are so much more dangerous than those on single-lane carriageways. But for this to happen,